Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm here with my guest Suze Hinton from the Cloud Advocate team. Hi Suze, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be on Visual Studio Toolbox. This is awesome. Great. Well, we're happy to have you and we're actually going to do a series on Windows IoT development and this is our first episode. So, let's jump into it. What are we going to talk about today in this episode? Yeah, today we're going to start with the basics. So we'll be talking about what Windows IoT Core is, because mm -hmm. that's what we'll be using for this, this whole series, and just how it differs from like regular UWP development, and also just like how you can get started with it. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think one of the reasons we wanted to do this series is because as a Visual Studio developer, you have just a lot of power to do this very easily, right? The, the tools are integrated, you can deploy from it, you can debug from it, you can do all these capabilities. So as a Visual Studio developer, this is super relevant to you. I think that's how I view it personally, right? Yeah, totally. And I was really surprised when I first used Windows IoT Core with Visual Studio because this is probably the best debugging and like feedback cycle that I've ever had when developing an app just for hardware in general because it makes it so easy to actually like run apps and make changes and continually kind of debug your application. Okay, that's awesome. So give us a little bit about, about your background. Like how, how did you come to this world of IoT? <laughs> what did you do? Sure. So I've been a developer for around 12 to 13 years now, and IoT was al always a hobby for me for a long time. Um, and then I just started getting more and more interested in it, and I, I came to Microsoft to focus on IoT uh, within the Cloud Developer Advocate team. So I get to do a lot of really cool stuff in Azure to do with IoT. Okay, that's awesome. All right, well, let's jump into it. So what are we going to show today? Yeah, sure. So we're going to talk about what I Windows IoT Core actually is, because mm -hmm. technically it's still Windows 10, right. but it is a little bit different, right? Yeah. So it's it's Win it's basically the Windows Core. It's it has a build number. You know, we were talking about this before we started recording. Like this is Windows running in a small device, and maybe we, we can show the device in particular that we're going to demo today. Maybe we we'll start there. So what what device we're going to be running everything against? Because yeah. you, you're not like there's no emulator for Windows IoT. Like that was one of the things I remember thinking through as I was learning. I was like, is there? I'm, I'm used to the emulator thing in the Windows development space. Here I needed to buy something specific. That's right. Yeah. So the, the most common device that we usually recommend for people to get started with is a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can get a Raspberry Pi or a version 2 or a Raspberry Pi version 3. So over here, we actually just have a Raspberry Pi version 3. I have it all plugged into a bunch of stuff that we're going to go into more detail about soon. So I do actually have like a little HDMI mini screen, and that's just running the default Windows IoT Core app right now. That's just plugged in, like I said, via HDMI. Um, and we have it connected to the Ethernet, so it has internet access. And then we have this rather scary looking breadboard here, but I promise that it's going to be super fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's got some extra pieces of hardware that you can start controlling from Windows IoT Core. Okay. So I think it, as much as I think this series of episodes is going to be focused on development, I, I really want f you know Visual Studio developers to walk away feeling comfortable with the hardware we're looking at. Uh, like this has been a hobby of mine as well, not, not as many years as you. I, I am such a newbie to this to this, but I feel like that gave me a perspective. Like when I started learning, and I was like, okay, first emulator, okay, no emulator, you got to get a board. So I bought a board, um, and I actually bought a bunch of boards over time, <laughs> and and one of them isn't compatible with Windows IoT Core yet. I found out. So like always, when you're buying hardware you've got to be very specific in this space. You can't just like order something randomly and expect it to run Windows IoT. Um, there's documentation, there's a list of like articles that say these are the boards that are supported and we have a board here that's obviously supported. We've tested it. This is the one we're going to use. Um, and then it's connected to, to a bunch of other hardware. And the point is that like what I've learned is that Think of the board as your PC. That's that's what's running end to end everything. It has the stack of networking, has USB support, has HDMI out. So it's a little mini computer in your hands. It's powered by a little bit of wire, right? It's just a regular mi micro USB mm -hmm. adapter. Yeah. Um, and then it has Ethernet port on it. So it's really easy to get started. But then the breadboard is kind of scary. So maybe you can talk <laughs> about the breadboard a little bit because I remember getting getting that as a as a gift. I got like a package. I had a Raspberry Pi. Uh, my my team gave this to us like a while back. That's what started my obsession. And I took out the breadboard and I was staring at this thing for a long time. <laughs> and it has pins and stuff. It's kind of intimidating if you've never done hardware before. So tell us about it. Yeah, it is really intimidating, but once you actually get used to using them, they're really, really cool. Mm -hmm. So this breadboard here is a really, really long one, so it's got a generous amount of room to play with. But the idea is that you do have these kind of holes or these pins that you can put things into, and it means that if you don't know how to solder, you can 
just play around a lot without actually creating any permanent damage mm -hmm. <laughs> or without ruining your devices. So a breadboard is really just a way of testing out ideas um, and it does it in a way that's very, very convenient. So every single little uh, sort of like hole that you see uh, is connected to copper underneath. And so it is connected in a very specific way, which makes it really easy to get started with it. So if you'll see along the top and the bottom of this breadboard, um, not all breadboards have this, but uh, the one that we're using today does we have these kind of this red and this bluish lines that are running along and this is just like a really nice easy power rail which is what we call it and if you have a look at the the top row of um, of these holes that actually connects in just a straight line all the way along underneath so you can think of anything that you put along this top row are all connected together so you can actually create like a, a source of power for all of your devices rather than having to just use the one source of power that's on your Raspberry Pi which is really cool and then the bottom row which is the blue with that little minus sign or the little negative symbol that's actually your ground so again you usually have devices always plugged into ground and power mm -hmm. and you you want um, to be able to have enough room to plug them all into the same source. So that's a really nice part of a breadboard. The rest are not actually sort of running uh, horizontally like the power rails are. They actually run vertically. So if I start at the first row um, and go downwards, the, all of these holes are connected to the one sort of copper line underneath. And so if you wanted to have different things plugged in um, to each other, you can actually just use that same line without having to literally join them together and solder them, which is really cool. And so you do get used to it. It is a little tricky to kind of get the hang of, um, but if you look at pictures of breadboards online and have a look at what's actually underneath those holes, it really starts to make sense. Yeah, and, and I think what helped me kind of, kind of think about this breadboard is like this, this is, like you said, it's, it's a platform from experimentation. And there's a bunch of stuff you can buy as a developer. Like in this episode, I'm not assuming you know any of this as an audience member, right? You're, you're watching this, you're like, mm, okay, I kind of get what that is now. This lets me add more devices or more widgets or lights or something that then is, can be controlled by my Windows IoT cord, which is the Raspberry Pi itself. And that's why the breadboard is hooked into the Raspberry Pi with a big cable. And then Raspberry Pi has all these options for you to plug stuff in. And then you can magically, with code, control that stuff that's plugged in or get data from it, et cetera, right? Totally. Um, but you don't have to know any of that in the beginning. In fact, what I found really cool is that uh, th because it has USB on the Raspberry Pi itself, you can do things. We'll show this in one of the episodes, like the, the live cam, right? Like, yeah. I, I literally found my old cam that was like <laughs> dusty. I pulled it out, I plugged it in, and I, had, and I had video, and I could capture video, and I could write code that used video and do something with it. Like, that, that's all very possible. Now you have to know what is or isn't compatible device-wise mm -hmm. with the Windows IoT Core platform. The driver is still needed there. Like there's no magic, magic in that sense. Um, but there's some magic with the breadboard, right? Because you can actually write um, stuff against it. So this is a more advanced scenario, but I just want to open up people's minds. Like you can get a piece of hardware, you can plug into Raspberry Pi for the board, and then you can write some generic code, which even if there is no driver per se in Windows, if Windows doesn't know what this thing is, you can still send commands to it and get data back from it. Can you talk about a little bit of that? Yeah, scenario? absolutely. So in electronics, we tend to try and have some kind of standards um, right. just so that it's easy to kind of develop against devices. So we have a few communication protocols that are really common, um, and we do have the implementations of that in Windows IoT Core mm -hmm. and in UWP, which is really cool. So one of those, for example, is I squared C, mm -hmm. which is into integrated circuit bus. Um, right. and that allows this common API where a lot of different devices speak that particular protocol. And because we support that in Windows IoT Core, you can literally pull up a data sheet, which might seem really scary at <laughs> first, but once you get used to it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And you can very easily grok, um, you know, once you understand the protocol, how to write those generic drivers. And so that's super empowering when you come across a device you want to use, but it's not necessarily something that is like certified to work. But if you know what protocol it speaks and you know know that that protocol supported in Windows IoT Core, you can pretty much like write whatever drivers you want. Yeah, it's, and it's really empowering. It's, it's fairly, it doesn't feel as intimidating once you learn a few of the sort of the hops over. Again, this, we're not going to cover that necessarily in super, super detail, but I found it accessible. Like, like I searched for something, I, I bought a piece of hardware at home, I plugged it in, I realized, oh man, there's no like driver inherently, not like the live cam, not like some, some of the other things. Um, but I was able to find a sample because somebody else, of course, did the work for me already in, in you know, some C-sharp code and it just, it just worked. It was kind of magical. This device just started 
sending me data back back to my, my Windows IT core and then I can do whatever I want with it. Uh, another thing to remind people is that this is all C-sharp, right? Like this yes. is UWP, it's C-sharp, it's Windows development, it's Visual Studio. We're, we're not going to cover anything where if like, oh, you need another tool. Like all you need is a Windows machine as your developer environment, Visual Studio, community or above. If you know C-sharp, you're good to go. If you know UWP, it's even better. Um, I'll, I'll give one of my experiences that I found. I, I looked at the Windows UWP sample library up on GitHub, and I found out that, oh, a bunch of these samples just run really well. Like the sample that says, you know, sh show video and save it to disk. Like right. that sort of thing actually just works because it's just UWP, right? Yeah, I was really pleasantly surprised by that because I wasn't really sure what to expect from Windows IoT Core because mm -hmm. I know it's like a more sort of optimized version to run on, you know, like a slightly less processor. You really know, tiny, powerful. really, really tiny, yeah, really underpowered Yeah, it's so devices. small. And so I think I just immediately assumed there'd be limitations. Mm -hmm. But even just plugging in a webcam via USB, like you said, if you're scared of breadboards at first, I just use the same like media capture you know, like classes and things like that that yeah. I would normally use on, a, on my full laptop. It was really, really cool. Yeah, and there's also a bunch of like uh, add-ons. Again, this is the hacker space. So <laughs> as, as you're kind of experimenting, there's, there's more than one way to get things done. And I've, I've bought a board uh, um, that kind of plugs in right into the Pi. It's actually designed for the Pi. And then it has a bunch of sensors attached to it. And then it comes with an SDK. And that just magically works because that's against just C me writing C-sharp code against this SDK library. And it just kind of works. So there's, there's like multiple ways as you kind of look around the internet and you look at samples, you might be like, oh, well, they're not using a breadboard. What is th that also works? Well, yeah, there's, there's more than one way to do it. Some people plug things directly into the Pi, mm -hmm. like those connectors that the... The, um, the GPIO. The, yeah, the GPIO port, like that can be connected directly to it as well. So I've, I've done that too. Like I had a screen that connected directly to it and that worked as well. Um, I also found stacking works. Like there's some, there's some boards you can stack on top of oh, the Pi. Oh, yeah, they and, like code hats or something. Yeah, yeah. and then you can pass, pass GPIO through. So there's like, there's so many ways to do it. So don't, don't get intimidated audience, you know, as you're watching this. Um, I found it just fun, and I, I just wanted to point it out. And I also want to mention that this is ARM, right? That's another yes. different yeah. thing, right? So, so talk a little bit about that. Like, what, what does it mean for you as a developer, UWP developer? Um, you, you can just kind of just just kind of works, right? Because Visual Studio can build to ARM. Yeah, exactly. So, um, ARM is a pretty common like build target for Visual yeah. Studio. You just have to keep in mind that. If you've been developing just for like desktop for a while, there might be certain things that aren't available when you're building for that target. But what I really like about Visual Studio is it'll it'll immediately tell you it that that's you not going to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think the best thing about um, building with Windows IoT Core is the fact that you don't have to learn a new language, a new program, and things like that. Because I feel that the electronics part it tends to be intimidating enough, and so you can just focus on that being the new thing you need to learn. And then Visual Studio kind of keeps you safe in those regards, where if you try and use something, it'll it'll tell you that you can't. So usually my advice is to just play and just try and write your app like you normally would, and just kind of see what's supported and what isn't supported. Okay, that's awesome. And um, what I found works uh, today on, on Core is obviously the UWP platform. Like you, right. you couldn't, if somebody gives you something that was built for x86, mm -hmm. like it, ju it just won't run. Like you'll try to run it. You can, like I copied some code over. I tried to run executable, and it said it doesn't support this platform. Like right. That's the error Windows will give you when you run something. But UWP built for ARM works because that's that's the scenario we're going to be showing. Um, there's also some newer scenarios coming out. So for example, I found that like .NET Core. Uh, 2.1 RC, uh, like preview 4 for sure, definitely works. So you can build it. I mean, it's like we're going to preview space, but yeah. we have a lot of people in the audience that love .NET Core, right? Oh, so totally, you can, yeah. You can now start running .NET Core on this because .NET Core, uh, not, not the developer SDK, but the runtime SDK can target ARM now. So that's yeah, a new thing that they've done. It's really awesome. It really just made it feel like it was just regular Windows development. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I want to point out to folks, uh, again, th things that I just very recently learned, so they're fresh <laughs> in my mind. Um, you can run more than, than, an, than an interface app. Like, yes, you can write a UWP app that's a foreground app that, you, that has you know, buttons on it or something you interact with, but you can run things as a background app as well. So the, the platform is pretty flexible. There's plenty of scenarios where you just want to run something on the device that's running in the background. And then you might want to um, you know, have that be something that's sending telemetry or using some hardware or whatever. Other times you might have a screen attached like we have. And, and there is screens that support touch as well. Like this one could be configured for that. We don't have it. There's some that are even easier that you can just bolt right on and touch will just work out of the box. So you could have this thing be, be a display. I've seen people make like a little 
tablet out of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's really hacky yep. stuff. Uh, buy, if, if you want a tablet, buy a tablet. Um, <laughs> don't, don't, don't make this your primary tablet. Yeah, but this is idea. like way more fun than buying a tablet. Yeah, this but is yeah. way more fun. <laughs> Uh, so that's kind of cool, and um, yeah, I, I think I think again, it's very accessible. Lots of ways to do it, and we'll we'll work through every detail. Like this episode was wasn't meant to be the very deep dive in the Visual Studio mm -hmm. part yet, but we felt that if we didn't explain all this, we'd jump right in, and you'd be like, hardware, like this 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 is weird, right? It's not as natural, and and you're gonna put up a GitHub repo, right, which will say exactly every single piece of hardware down to the version number, so that people, if they want to reproduce this 100%, they can. And I found that difficult from past videos. People would show something, yes. and I'd be like, which Pi? Like you said Pi, but Pi 2, Pi 3, yeah. Pi 3B. And like that's there's really important, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, so. so we have this thing in electronics that we call like a, a BOM, or a mm. Bill of Materials. And so if you are a responsible person, you actually list those things out. Yeah. So I, I only used parts that are easily accessible. Mm. Um, and some of those parts are actually in some Azure certified kits that we also offer as well. So awesome. I tried to make it as easy as possible for everyone to get their hands on this stuff so that they're not hunting down weird, obscure eBay websites and things <laughs> like that. Yeah. Make it make it nice and easy, people. All right. So, um, is there anything else that we wanted to cover in this introduction episode? No, I think that was it. I'm kind of excited to dig into the the hardware nitty gritty side of it next. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, the, this we'll tell the secret to the crowd. We're going to record all these today, right? But we're going to space them out as we release yeah. them. It takes time, folks, to get these things finalized and published, <laughs> and we want to make sure you you get to see all of them. But there'll be a bunch of episodes. This is the first one. Uh, so I'll close by saying that we plan to do six. If all goes well today in the studio, please please don't kill us if we make five or something. <laughs> Ho hopefully, all the technology will work. Um, but the six will cover, and uh, we'll put into the abstract some information about what episodes you can expect in the future, and then we'll we'll ship them every week after we ship the first episode to, to get it out there. I think the, the goal, uh, Suze, mean you have like, we want to demystify, you know, the hardware to software to debugging life yes. cycle. We want to make sure that you can start, you know, the hardware, you kind of understand why you have this hardware, you can debug to the hardware, and then we'll start adding sensors and IoT uh, support with, with, for the cloud, with Azure IoT, and we'll do a bunch of other cool stuff. We'll even look at like fabrication if all goes well, yes. and how you can maybe make this a little bit more real for, for your tinkering world. So lots of exciting episodes today. Yeah, I'm excited to break it into parts so that you, we can just look at detail at everything mm -hmm. so that we don't leave any sort of stuff behind so that people feel empowered to like get started straight away. So All right, Yeah. Well, sounds good. All right, so as well, thank you for being in the first episodes. And we'll be back with future episodes. And thank you, folks, for watching. We hope you check out the whole series. And thank you for watching Visual Studio Toolbox. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.